Hello, Swoon Squad. Do you love romances with marriages of convenience, pro sports heroes, grumpy sunshine, and forced proximity? Well, you are going to need a Gatorade shower after you read this steamy new rom-com. Welcome to While You Were Reading, a podcast for contemporary romance readers. I'm your host, USA Today bestselling romance author, Lisa Daly. On today's show, we're talking with Lainey Davis about her very, very spicy new romance, Last Call, A Marriage of Convenience Romance, and that's coming out July 29th. Lainey Davis is a USA Today bestselling author of steamy contemporary romance. She lives in Pittsburgh with three feral sons, two rescued rabbits, and one tired husband. Her books are also set in the Steel City, and they focus on everyday folks with everyday challenges. Welcome, Lainey. We are so excited to have you on the show. I am so Super, super excited about this book. Can you please tell us a little about it? Yeah, thank you for having me. So this book is called Last Call, and it's a marriage of convenience romance. It is book four in my Bridges and Bitters series, and they're interconnected standalones. So you don't have to have read the earlier books in the series. You could jump right in if you wanted. Um, But this one's about a bartender, Esther Storm, and she is in a marriage of convenience with Koa Stewart, who is a rugby coach from New Zealand who is looking for some help with his citizenship. And uh, yeah, they, um, they run into some, some challenges. (laughs) So the the thing I always love about marriage of convenience books, which is one of my favorite tropes, by the way, super tropalicious. We we love the tropes here on while you were reading, as you know. And one of my favorite little magical things that always happens with the marriage of convenience trope is at some point in the story, you have to show up and pretend like you're married. And right, and that I think is something that just makes it so much fun because what, oh, you know, what invariably happens is as they're getting to know each other, things are getting a little steamy. So one of the great things about Esther and Koa is that obviously while they're having, (laughs) while they're having to perform this theater, uh, you know, some real feelings develop. So what made you decide to, um, to write a marriage of convenience book? I, I have just always wanted to write one. I've done a few fake fiances or fake dating, and that is my absolute favorite trope, like any kind of fake scenario where, and then it becomes real. Right. Um, so, and I, I just, uh, I figured that Esther would have needed to uh, do something to get the startup funds for this wonderful bar that she owns that shows up in all the previous books in the series and actually in my series prior to this. Esther's been kind of showing up as a side character for a long time. And I loved the idea that she's been secretly married all this time with this like absentee on paper husband. I personally love the idea of a big chunk of money and an absentee husband. I feel like I feel like that's some that's a trope we can all get on board with. Um, I love that. So is this was Esther a character because she's been you know seen throughout your uh, several series? So it, it was Esther a character that the readers were really like, she needs her own story. Yes, people have been asking me about Esther for six or seven books, and wow. that made it so hard to write because <laughs> she was such a fan favorite, and I felt all this pressure. Right. Um, I knew almost as soon as I invented her that she would have a marriage of convenience, um, and I really put off solving more than that about her because <laughs> I just had so much pressure. <laughs> I, But you know what? I love... I love that, though, that you went ahead and sort of dove into that, right? Because there, 
there it's oh, first of all like what an amazing thing when you have written a character who is not intended to have her own story but it just is so real to people that they want you know that readers want her to have her own happily ever after so I, I love that that happens. I really love that. I really love that. Any books that are like based on sort of fan favorite characters, I think are always so fun because it's not just what you're investing into the story, but it's also about what the readers have already invested into the story. And I'm glad you rose to the task. I think, uh, I think everybody is going to be very, very happy that you did. What? So we talked about your favorite trope, which fake fiance is absolutely my favorite trope. And in fact, my next book is going to be fake fiance because mm. when we were at a recent writing event, we were talking about fake fiance books, which I think several of us really loved. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never written one. It's my favorite trope. It's just like butter and fried butter oh, yeah. wrap all over. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about the butter that way. <laughs> We won't oh, get into the butter. Break. <laughs> but yeah, so it's one of my favorites. And it's so funny how we can love a trope like that as writers, but never write it. So, and I know readers love, 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 love the marriage of convenience trope. So what do you think is the, aside from the pressure, what was the most challenging thing to write about this book? This was my first time where one of my main characters wasn't white. Uh, so Koa is Maori, and I wanted to be so careful with that. Uh, and it was a really, you know, it was a, an important challenge. And along the way, I wanted to employ some authenticity readers to help me just really make sure I was telling his story authentically. Um, I love that. Yeah. And I so appreciate the time that they gave and the perspective. So it was it was really exciting to tackle that. I love that um, so many authors are tackling more diverse characters right now. And we do have to be, especially, you know, white authors have to be cautious about the way that we do that. But I think it's really important that we do do that because in our books, it should be just like in our lives where we have a wide variety of interesting people with a whole lot of different backgrounds. And I think some of those unique cultural things and, you know, different perspectives and different traditions and things like that can just play into romance in such a delicious way. So speaking of delicious, let's talk about Koa. Okay. <laughs> and, and his like, ooh, oh, the temperature just raised a little bit. Uh, so tell us a little about him. And well, he how, how is, did you make him so dreamy? He is very big and beefy. So mm -hmm. in my, you know, in my Grumpy Sunshine book, Esther is the grumpy one. She's always just been this sort of no-nonsense bartender. So I also wanted her to have like this annoyingly cheerful partner um and he's like really laid back and everything just sort of brushes off of him seemingly and um and he's a really big guy he's a rugby player and esther is a curvy gal so she really appreciates having a bigger hero um mm -hmm. And he is just really smitten with her. He does annoying things like she'll drop something on the ground and he'll pick it up for her. Wow. At one point he does her dishes. Like it's just so annoying how he is just out there taking care of her when she didn't ask for that. So. Uh, you know, I think we can all get on board with a romance hero who does the dishes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's true, Dom, just in our books, but also in real life. I, uh, yeah, I think that's really delightful. I think that the big guy, curvy heroine is such a fantastic matchup. I really, really do love that because I think for years we always saw like the little teeny girl and great big guy. And, you know, of course there are some wonderful stories with that, but I think that this idea that we have more heroines who look like us, who think like us, who aren't perfect, who have anxiety issues or, you know, love cake. Yeah. <laughs> I personally love cake. I admit to it. I love cake. Um, I, I think that that or ha uh, Talia Hibbert, Hibbert had written, um, you know, in her Brown sister series, one of her main characters has fibromyalgia, which mm -hmm 
Right. Which was such a, an amazing sort of story because it just showed from such a great perspective about how all of us are worthy of love in all of our many different forms and experiences. And I, and I just love to see fiction reflecting that. So when we, we're talking about your favorite kind of trope, one of your favorite tropes, marriage of convenience, what's your least favorite trope? I hate second chance romance. (laughs) I just, oh man, I do not love reading it and readers love it. So I've written exactly one so far. Well, mm, and then I did write an old flame one, which is one of my silver fox romance. So I guess I've done two out of my 22 books. Um, I know. I I love that you're like, well, I hate it, but I wrote two. I Uh, had a hard time figuring out a way for them to break up that would still make it acceptable for them to get back together someday. Right. It's really hard. It is hard. Well, and you know what's so funny is like I too have have a little issue with that. And it's I think it's all the years that I spent as like a dating guru on television where I I really firmly believe that breaking getting together breaking up getting together breaking up is a terrible relationship strategy because what unless they are like abducted by aliens or have like a dramatic personality change they're still the same person you're still gonna have all your same problems and maybe you know things are okay for a couple of weeks or a couple of months of fantastic sex but after that you're still both you. And so all the stuff that drove you apart in the beginning is, you know, is going to be the same stuff in real life that keeps you apart this time. And that's the challenge, I think, with these second chance romances is that you really have to find a way to break them up that feels permanent, but also can't be too terrible because then we can't root for them to get back together. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody I know. Has to be redeemed. <laughs> right. Right. You have to have like a really good reason for whatever they did that ruined everything. Although I think Christina Lauren in something wilder had done a really nice job with that, with, um, you know, with their second chance romance in that story, you know, they were young and they fell in love and then he had, I can't remember what happened and I don't want to spoil it. Something big happened. Yeah. And there was a, (laughs) and there was a misunderstanding And, but in the end, nobody was a terrible person that we're going to have to forgive so that he's worthy of our our heroine. So yeah, there's that. All right. So speaking of books, let's move on to our second little uh, segment here where we give each other book recommendations. And if we have enough time afterwards, we'll braid each other's hair and we'll eat some frozen cookie dough. Okay. So. What's your book recommendation for me? Well, I was listening to my favorite podcast a few weeks ago while you were reading. uh, And I I just happened to come up that very day. It was my turn for the new Christina Lauren book, The True Love Experiment, from my library. So I I started it right after your podcast aired. (laughs) Well, first of all, thank you very much, and I'll pay you later. And second of all, that was the book I was going to recommend to you (laughs) i loved it so much i'm gonna have to stop recommending it to every single person but i loved it so much first of all i i loved like the i love the fact that the main uh character is a romance novelist yes i could not get enough of that how far along are you i'm like 30 percent in they are just now I don't think this is a big spoiler. They're just now for this reality show, uh, finding the men who meet the different trope. Uh, I, I just love that whole concept. I love everything about it. The, I, the, the cinnamon <laughs> roll, the alpha male. I just, oh my goodness. It's, I, yeah. I'm savoring it. <laughs> I know that was one of my favorite, favorite parts is that it, it was that, and we talk about this in the, uh, in the podcast uh, episode with Christina Lauren. Uh, I loved, I think that was one of my favorite parts was how they, um, how they cast the various heroes according to trope. And I just, I love it. Love, 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 love. So within those tropes, if you could remember all of them, hmm. which is your favorite guy trope? Whew. So there was like the cinnamon roll, yeah. the hot nerd, the 
billionaire CEO guy. I can't remember. There's a ton of them all either. Here's my favorite guy trope. West Ravenel, Roy Kent, like a man who doesn't think that he's worthy, but actually is, but he's like a little bit grumpy and that's, that's my hero. I love that. <laughs> I love I love that and I love him and I will read him all day long every day every day. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'll get in a whole bunch of fights about Lisa Claypus heroes and everybody else can have Lord St. Vincent. I will take West Ravenel <laughs> and happily. Right, happily ever after, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Lainey last call is absolutely phenomenal. I am super super steamy like so excited for this book to come out. You guys are absolutely going to love it. And if you want to win a copy of Last Call, woo -woo, and I know you do, um, you are going to head on over to whileyouwereading.com. Right down there at the bottom of the page is the spot where you can enter to win a signed copy of Last Call. I'm super excited about that. I think it's going to be really fun, which will arrive in this magical, beautiful little envelope. Yay. right to your doorstep for your steamy reading pleasure. Lainey, thank you so much for being here. You are awesome. Last Call is in stores at the end of the month, and we are super, super excited about it. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for being here today. Lainey, you are fantastic, and we are looking forward to seeing much, much more from you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk tropes. So Last Call has marriage of convenience, forced proximity on a road trip, found family, and a surprise, don't touch my wife, which you gotta love. All right, Swoon Squad, I know it's time for Will You Be My Book Boyfriend? Okay, for no number one, Koa is a rugby player who is just massive. I mean, like massive, this guy is huge, which means you can wear any kind of shoes you like and still have to lean up to kiss him. Mm. Number two, he washes dishes without being asked. Mm-hmm, yep. And number three, you may be his fake bride, but he's still gonna treat you like wifey. And that is why Koa is a solid four ring book boyfriend. <laughs> Hey, Swoon Squad, if you would like to win a copy of Last Call, be sure to head over to whileyouwereading.com. That's whileyouwereading.com to enter to win. You'll also find the link to enter that giveaway uh, down below in the show notes. Good luck. Mm -hmm.